Hi, welcome back to the Bear Maker YouTube channel. My name is Justin. Today I'm going to make this duck. Let's get started. Quack quack. This is actually the second duck I've made like this. The last one was a Christmas present for my little niece last year. And it was fun to make and I had this scrap piece of MDF and I figured it would be just about perfect to make another one. So I just trace out the shape of the duck, referencing a picture of the one I had last year. And just took that over to the bandsaw to cut it out. My bandsaw skills need some work. You might notice that as I'm cutting the shape out, it's not great. I'd probably make it more difficult than it needs to be. And I also don't cut out all the details on the tail that I had. Instead of a little feather coming off the tail, I just made it one solid piece. And then it's just over to the sander to get it down to the lines. As close as I can anyway. It's tricky to sand down to the lines in some of the tight areas and the curves. So I do most of the work with this oscillating belt sander. It's a really handy tool. Like I like it much better than my belt disc sander combination thing that I have. I don't even think I've used that one since I got this one. And with the shaping mostly done, just take the wing over and resaw it in half. So you have two wings that are exact same shape, one for each side. And then I just clamped up the body of the duck and started working closer to the lines in some of the tight areas. The head where the little like ruffles are, it looks cool in the finished duck, but it's kind of a pain to get in there and get some separation between each little feather. But I think that's more me not being very good with hand tools and hand sanding, that sort of thing. The other areas that are wider surfaces went just fine. And then with the shaping all done, it's just a matter of sanding all the surfaces again to make them nice and flat, get the pencil marks off. And then I forgot to film it, but I measured out where I wanted the wheels to go. So I'm going to just punch that so I have a nice center divot. Grab a 3 8 inch Forstner bit so I can make the hole for the axles that I'll make in a little bit. And just drill those all the way through. And with those drilled through, it's time to just do some touch-up sanding on the duck and make sure to round over the edges. This is a toy for a small child, so you don't want any sharp bits on there that they could hurt themselves with. And then this is trying to set up to drill the holes in the wings in the same places so they line up on either side of the duck all right. And I'm using that square just so I can put the wing right in the corner with the same part of the wing in the corner. And then I know what measurement I marked on the other wing so that I can just essentially mirror that and mark it on this wing the same way. And then it was just a matter of transferring those marks over to the body and drilling those holes all the way through. And then we're going to use dowels to align the wings. So on the wings, you only want to drill about halfway through. And the smart thing would be to mark your drill bit to make sure you don't go all the way through. But I didn't do that, and luckily it worked out. And then you just gotta put the dowels through the duck, and then get your wing set on. And here you can see I'm adjusting the one. My hole was off just a little bit, so it didn't quite fit into place. But eventually I adjusted the hole enough where I could glue it up, clamp it up, and then let it sit for a bit so the glue dries. And here I'm trying to do two things at once. Normally it would be fine painting the duck and printing the wheel assemblies. But once it starts printing, you might notice that it doesn't actually start printing. The filament got jammed in there pretty good. I had to actually take the entire print head apart, that big black blocky part that's on the front of the printer, take that entire thing apart to unclog the print before I got it to print again. But with that out of the way, I was able to get the duck painted. Here I'm getting the orange bill painted on. This, I think I put three coats of yellow on the duck before doing the bill. The MDF really soaks up the paint, so you want to make sure that you got a good, consistent layer on there. And then it's time to put the eyes on. 
I used calipers to try to get them lined up in the exact same place on each side, but I think I still ended up a little off, but they're pretty close. If you're not looking for it, you won't really notice that he's kind of a little cross-eyed duck. But that's okay. He's a special duck. And I put a layer of paste wax on it just to help protect the paint and the duck in general from any other kind of grime or dirty little kid fingers that might touch it. And then here's after I finally get the 3D printer working again. This is my first try at printing an axle tube that'll go in the hole we drilled in the body of the duck. And here I'm just fitting it up and seeing if it fits. I got it started, but it was a really snug fit. In fact, I could barely get it back out of the hole. So I knew I had to decrease the size just a little bit to get it to work. And all the parts I'm using here that are 3D printed, I designed in Tinkercad, which is a web-based program. It's really basic 3D modeling software, but it works for me because it's basic. I don't know a lot about 3D modeling. I've tried using Fusion 360 some. I'm not terrible at that, but if I want to get something done fast, I just go into Tinkercad and it speeds up the process a lot for me. And with this one done, I just had to get it off the print bed, which is simple. Just pop it off there or fling it across the room. And with that one done, once I found it and made sure it worked, I moved on to printing the actual axles that will go into the wheels and the wheels will ride on. So these will be glued into the tubes that we just printed and then the wheel will rest on the cylinder that it's printing now here so it can freely rotate on there and this will be glued in place. And then it's got a little like hubcap type thing on there. And then here we're just printing all four of the wheels at once. This I printed overnight. I think it was about six hours. And when I set it up to print, I forgot to enable supports because the bottoms of the wheel, the bottoms as it's printing aren't flat. So it succeeded, but the bottom is a little rough. Luckily, that'll be the side that faces the duck, so you won't really ever see it, so it's fine. Hide the mistakes. I did go back though and just clean up all the stringy bits. That wouldn't happen if I would have used supports. That would have been all a pretty solid surface. But again, not a huge loss. It's maybe five minutes that I took to clean up all four of the wheels not that big a deal and nobody's gonna see it so whatever but then with that all done I could move on to actually start assembling so I'm using just five minute epoxy two-part epoxy just mixed together real quick and then just glue the tube into the body of the duck I use calipers just to make sure it's about even same amount of tubes sticking out on each side and then carefully put epoxy in the tube and then stick the axle through the wheel and then stick that onto the into the tube carefully so you don't epoxy the wheel in place to make sure it actually spins and then just hold it in place for 30 seconds or so to make sure it's all stuck nice and good and you got yourself a rolly duck and then I just put the eye hook in there I still had some epoxy so I used it just to make sure that stays in place and this is just orange paracord and a handle that I also 3D printed, but I forgot to get video of that printing. But it's the same. Layer after layer after layer just prints up and then you have a handle. And then I tie it in place with the paracord. Once you have it tied up and secure, if you use a lighter or something and melt it, it'll make sure it doesn't get all frayed. It'll just look nicer in the long run and it's not a hard step to do. Just make sure you don't get that flame too close to the 3D printed parts so you don't melt something accidentally. It is plastic after all. And then you're done. You got a duck that you can pull around the room or you can give to somebody else for them to pull it around the room. Whichever. If you are interested in making a duck like this, I'm gonna have a template as well as the files for 3D printing available as a package on my Etsy shop. It's a really fun project and it's a great gift 
birthday, Christmas, whatever gift for any little ones you might have. If you want this specific duck, the very duck you just watched me make, I'm actually going to give it away as part of a giveaway for recently passing 100 subscribers here on YouTube, just to say thank you for everyone checking out my content. If you want this duck or two of the pins I made while I was making my last video, leave a comment down below and then I'm going to pick a winner randomly from all the comments and get in touch with you and then if you want the duck I'll send you the duck, if you want a pair of pins I'll send you a pair of pins. Thanks again so much for watching. What? What? No. Watching. Thanks for watching. Whatever. I'm gonna get out of here. You folks have a wonderful rest of your day.